Hi guys! So, welcome to my channel. In this channel, I'll be sharing with you some bite-sized videos um, discussing about finance, accounting, tax, and entrepreneurship in general. So, if you want to be updated, click subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload a new video every week. Bye! Hi everyone! So today, we will discuss the differences between the taxation of a sole proprietorship business in the Philippines and an OPC or a one-person corporation. So get ready your pen and paper or your calculators and we will start computing the different scenarios of taxation between a sole proprietorship and an OPC. Enjoy! So, last week, we had discussed about the basic differences between an OPC and a sole proprietorship. So, we discussed about the differences in terms of juridical personality, their extent of liability, succession, reportorial requirements, and especially income taxes. In this video, we will discuss the basic differences on how you will tax a sole proprietorship business and an OPC. So, let's get ready get your pen and paper get your calculator and we will compute together um scenarios between sole proprietorship business and an opc so first let's discuss the theory so if you're a sole proprietorship business you are taxed like an individual meaning the graduated income tax table will apply to you so what does that mean so in this um, tax table here, you can see that if you are an individual earning 250000 and below, you the income tax rate that will apply to you is 0% or you won't be asked to pay, to pay um, income tax. Then, if you are earning above 250000 to 400000 in taxable income, the income tax rate will be 20% of the excess of the 250000 So, you can just follow the tax bracket. So, you can see here that if you are an individual or a sole proprietorship business who is earning above 8 million or the bracket 6, if you are earning above 8 million in taxable income, then the 35% tax bracket, income tax bracket will apply to you. Now, how does that differ with an OPC? With an OPC, you are taxed like a corporation, meaning that the 30% income tax rate will apply to you. So, flat 30% income tax rate. Now, so now let's start computing. So, let's say that we are a business and we earn about 30 million in sales in one year, gross sales in one year. And we registered as a sole proprietorship business. So, how will we be taxed? So, let's say our sales is 30 million in one year and in order for us to get that sale, we have roughly about 50% in cost of sales or cost of goods sold. So, we deduct 15 million from the 30 million. Now, we arrive at the 15 million gross profit. And now, let's say that in order to operate the business smoothly, we have operating expenses or administrative expenses of about 2.5 million. So, we deduct the 2.5 million from the gross profit again, and we get the taxable, the net taxable income of 12.5 million. Now, it's time for us to go back to the graduated income tax table that I have shown you earlier. So, using that tax table, we can see that the 12.5 million falls under bracket 6, wherein the 35% income tax rate will apply. So, using that tax table, we, we see that the base tax is around 2.41 million, and then to compute the excess over the base, we deduct 8 million from the 12.5 million, and then the excess or the difference, we multiply to 35%. So, we get 1,575,000. So, now, how much is the total income tax to be paid in that single year alone by that taxpayer? So, we get 3,985,000. So, that is 
if these taxpayer registered as a sole proprietorship business. Now, what if what if this taxpayer was registered as an OPC or as a one-person corporation? How will the income tax differ? So let's say given that same um, tax, given that same scenario, except that the registration is different. So let's say we have the gross sales of 30 million in one year. And then to generate that sales, 50% um, of it goes to cost of goods sold or cost of sales. So we get 50, 15 million gross profit. Right. And then in order to run the business smoothly, that OPC also incurs around 2.5 million in operating and administrative expenses. And now we get the same net income or net taxable income of 12.5 million. Now because this is an OPC, the 30% corporate income tax will apply. So 12.5 million times 30%, we get 3,750,000. Three million seven hundred fifty thousand. Now, given that all things are equal, only the registration type is different. We can see here that we can actually save by registering as an OPC, right? So, what what's the point here? If you are a business and you are earning above eight million and you're thinking of registering as a sole proprietorship business. So you're earning 8 million in net. So maybe it's time for you to reconsider if you can actually save on income taxes just by changing your business structure. So that scenario, that first scenario is using Comparing a sole proprietorship business and a one-person corporation using um, itemized deductions, meaning we we itemize all the costs and expenses that the business has and deduct it from our sales and then get the income tax. So we can see in that scenario that the OPC can actually save the business more by around 235000 per year. So, in the next section, we will now um, compare what if, um, given that same level of sales, but the business decides not to use the um, itemized deductions, but decides to use the what we call the OSD, or the 40% optional standard deduction. So using that scenario, and using that same level of sales, which type of business structure will actually save you more? So, we'll take so now, we will go to our next scenario. So, given the same facts, a taxpayer um, earns about 30 million gross sales in one year. So, let's say this taxpayer registered as a sole proprietorship business. So, now, we decide that we will use the 40% OSD or the optional standard deduction. So, what will be our income tax for the year? So, given that the business structure is a sole proprietorship business, we get the sales of 30 million. Now, according to our tax rules, if you are a sole proprietorship business, you are not allowed to deduct your cost of goods sold when you use the optional standard deduction. So meaning, 30 million less zero cost of goods sold, we get the gross profit of 30 million. Now, this is the part where we will apply the 40% OSD. So we get 40% of 30 million, which is 12 million, and deduct it from the gross profit. So, 30 million less 12 million, we get 18 million of net taxable income. So, this net taxable income, this is the amount that we will compute the tax for. So, using that same graduated income tax table, again, 
we see that 18 million falls under bracket 6. And using that same computation, we arrive we arrive at the income tax payable of 5,910,000 in one year. So it's quite high, right? Now, what if these taxpayer registered as an OPC or a one-person corporation? So given that same circumstance, so let's say this taxpayer earned um, 30 million in one year. And given our existing tax rules, a corporation who opted to use the 40% OSD can actually deduct its cost of, cost of goods sold or its cost of sales in computing the OSD. So in this matter, we can deduct the 15 million against the 30 million. So our gross profit is 15 million. Now, we apply the 40% optional standard deduction against the 15 million. So, doing that, we get 6 million. 15 million times 40%, we get 6 million. And then, we arrive at the net income, the taxable net income of 15 million minus 6 million, which is 9 million. Now, because we are registered as an OPC, we can use a 30% corporate income tax rate. So, 9 million times 30% income tax rate, we arrive at the income tax payable of 2.7 million. Now, you can really see here the stark difference between registering as a sole proprietorship business and an OPC. So, it's very obvious that using an OPC structure can save you around 3.2 million given this type of sales, given this type of structure. So, what's the point here? The point here is, if you are new to business, you can actually consult with your existing accountant or your tax consultant and plan out, plan ahead, what type of business structure can actually serve you in the long term. So, if you need to plan out your registration, you also have to foresee what's your sales forecast, what's your um, forecast of your costs and expenses in the coming years. So, doing that, you can actually predict and predict and compute in advance how much taxes you're, you will likely pay under each type of structure. And then from there, you can actually decide which um, business structure can actually serve you in the long run, can serve you in your best interest. So you can save more legally and ethically according to the rules. So now, if you have questions, I, I believe that we have discussed so much about these tax types, but if you have questions, you can drop them down in the comment section and my team will reach out to you. So, we are now down to the last part of our video. So, to recap, the basic difference between a sole proprietorship and an OPC in terms of income tax will likely depend on how you plan out the operations of your business. If you foresee that your operations will likely expand in the future or in the next five years and that um, using an OPC structure will help you save more taxes, then it's better that you opt for an OPC registration at the onset. So, if you are an accountant and you would like to know more um, about OPC or if you wanted to um, offer your services as an accountant to many new businesses out there, I have an upcoming course. Um, I'll put the link in the description box below. I have an, uh, an upcoming course called the OPC Formula where we will discuss there the nitty-gritty on how to register an OPC, what's, what are the paperwork that you needed, what are the 
forms that you need, the reportorial requirements, as well as sample tax computations for each type of industry. So if you're interested to know that, go over the description box below and we'll see you there. So I hope that you learned something today and see you next week for another bite-sized video about finance and entrepreneurship. Bye!